Maths is all about numbers. Everything that you learn in mathematics is nothing but different forms of number pattern. And actually, not just math, but all physical phenomena, natural phenomena, everything can really be explained using number patterns, right? So these number patterns are at the very core of all math or all nature, right? Let's look at a very simple number pattern, right? Let's say one, three, five, seven. What are these? If you look at them, what are they? These are nothing but odd numbers. These are nothing but odd numbers, right? Now you could visualize them as triangles. One triangle. This is three triangles. If I divide it further, this will be five triangles here. Seven triangles, right? So if I want to divide a triangle into each part into equal areas, the number of triangles I'll get in each row is going to be an odd number, right? This is one way to visualize it. Now let's add them and see. One. One and three, you add, you'll get four. One plus three plus five, you'll get nine. One plus three plus five plus seven, you'll get sixteen. Right? What are these? Nothing but square numbers, right? Why do you get square numbers? Because adding triangles gives you squares, right? Two triangles make up a square, which is why adding these numbers that represented triangles gave you a square. So it's just one way to see it, right? There's another way we can visualize triangles. Let's take one. Then I have one and two, one, two and three, one, two, three and four. These are all triangles, right? The first one has just one point. The second one has three points. The third one has six points. The fourth one has ten points, right? So we call all of these as triangular numbers, right? We call them as triangular numbers because, as you see, they form triangles, right? Now again, we said if you add up triangles, you get squares. So if you add these triangles, you should again be getting squares, right? Let's try it. We have one first. One and three gives you four. Three and six gives you nine. Square again. Six and ten gives you sixteen. Square again, right? So you get these square numbers. These are nothing but square numbers, right? One, four, nine, sixteen are nothing but square numbers, right? You can see that in the figure also. What we did here, one plus three, so one and three gave you four, right? I'm just rotating the triangle and putting it on top. Three and six gives you nine, right? Six and ten gives you sixteen, right? So multiple ways in which you can visualize a simple concept of triangles and squares, right? It actually links numbers, geometry, algebra, everything, right? Which is why number patterns are so fascinating, right? When you start visualizing number patterns. They become extremely fascinating. And this is nothing new for you. You've already been learning number patterns for a very long time now. In fact, what is the very first thing that you learn in maths? It's nothing but a number pattern. The first thing that you learn in maths is nothing but counting, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. That is nothing but a number pattern, and we also have a name for it. That's natural numbers, and we represent it with n, right? So there are some number patterns that you already know. Right, the very basic one, the first thing that you learn in math. What is it? Counting one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Right. This is actually a number pattern, and it also has a name. It's called natural numbers. We normally represent it by n. Right. So on a line, one, two, three, four, five. These are nothing but natural numbers. We can now count everything. Let me take a basket. There's one apple here, three oranges, four fruits in total. Right. Now, what if we want to represent what is left in the basket, right? We could represent the fruits using natural numbers. How do we represent what is left in the basket? There is nothing, right? There is nothing. How do we show nothing with natural numbers? You can't, right? Which is why we now bring in a zero, right? If we include zero to the set of natural numbers that we already had, we now get whole numbers. These zero to infinity are nothing but whole numbers represented by W, right? Again, there are infinite such numbers. Let's now see what numbers we get by adding two whole numbers, right? Say we add two and five, we get seven, which is also a whole number. Try three plus eight, that gives you eleven, which is again a whole number, right? So adding whole numbers is still giving up, whole, giving us whole numbers, right? So we can still work with these. Now, what happens if we subtract these two numbers instead, right? We do three minus eight. What does that give you? Minus five. Now, minus five is not a part of our set of whole numbers, right? Is not a part of our set. So, what do we do? 
to be able to represent minus phi, we add another set of numbers to the left of zero. These are nothing but negatives of the natural numbers, right? So we add negatives of the natural numbers to the other side. This entire set of numbers that we now have is called as integers, right? Represented by i, again, an infinite set, right? So, okay, do we now have all the numbers possible? Seems like a lot, right? But not really. Let's zoom into a section of the number line to see. Let's say we zoom into 0 to 1. Can we have more numbers here? This is one unit, right? This is one unit. Can we divide it into smaller units is the question. If we can, then we would have numbers in between, right? So instead of a section, let's imagine it to be something like a pizza, right? Let's imagine this to be a pizza. Let's move the line down. Let's have a pizza instead of the number, right? Now, can we divide this? Essentially, we want to divide this unit, right? This is one unit. We can divide it into two halves like this. So between zero and one, there is one point, which is the half, correct? Now, if we take this half, you can further divide it into two quarters. You can further divide it into two quarters. What does that tell you? Between this half, there is a point which is the quarter, right? Similarly, this quarter, you can further have a point one eight. This one eight, you can have a point one sixteenth and so on, right? We can keep going. We can keep slicing it into smaller and smaller pieces and we can keep dividing our number line, right? So what does that tell us? That integers are not enough to represent all possible numbers there are. In fact, between every two integers, there are another infinite set of numbers, right? We were able to divide it infinitely, right? We can keep going on and on, right? So between any two integers, there are again an infinite set of numbers. Now, these numbers that we just got are called as rational numbers, right? Rational numbers, the definition for these is nothing but any number that can be represented as p by q, right? p by q, where p and q are integers, q is not one, and p and q don't have any common factor. Right. So that is essentially what a rational number is. And actually, even all the integers are rational numbers. Why? Because Q can be one, right? If you put Q equal to one, they all become integers. So integers are rational numbers.